Welcome to A Closer Look. I'm your host, Linda Fontaine. Thank you for joining us today. My guests today are Sister Bernadette Kenny and Tanya Gully. They are the authors of this wonderful book, Better for Being With You. We had them on a couple years ago, but this has been such an inspirational book. We wanted to have them on again because some of the stories are very relevant for what's going on today. Thank you guys for being here today. Now, Talk to me a little bit about your inspiration for this book. Talk to me, Sister Bernie. We wanted to share with us the many exciting things that happen once one opens oneself to uh, all that is going on. We have had many wonderful experiences, and together we tried to document it and put it out for feedback. Mm -hmm. We want everybody to have the fun we've had. Well, that's wonderful. Well, tell me a little bit about your journey that brought you to some of these stories and why you decided, I know why you decided to write the book, but tell me a little bit about the philosophy of care. We believe that when you are one with the person in front of you, you make a connection, mm -hmm. and together we heal ourselves and each other. That's the philosophy. Well, tell me a little bit about some of these stories you guys were talking about that you thought were real relevant that you wanted to bring back to us. Tanya, you, you <laughs> well, your book. Okay. Yeah, Tanya, talk yeah. to us about these. So the... Uh, Beginning the book, mm -hmm. as we look back, the book is a little prophetic. Mm -hmm. We wrote the book pre-COVID and Better for Being With You. We did, I do not believe we actually realized the value of being with each other prior to COVID. Um, when we had the idea for the book, we wanted to write the book for healthcare students, healthcare professionals, nursing students, physicians, social workers, because we wanted to encourage them to, vet, to develop that relationship with their patient that would promote quality care for the people they were serving. That was really the origin of why we wanted to write the book for students, you know, to uh, develop that relationship, number one. And number two, Sister Bernie, as the founder of the Health Wagon, realized the importance of those relationships between the patients she cared for, building community uh, relationships with patients and that type of thing. And Bernie's had such um, significant history in nursing and with the Medical Missionaries of Mary, which is a medical religious group of women that she has served for greater than 60 years in the Catholic order that I just felt like it was a very important story to tell. The book begins with a story that Sister Bernie had when she was working in Africa. And I'll let Bernie tell that story, but it takes us through three continents. We go from Ireland to Africa, mm -hmm. back to the United States when Sister Bernie was uh, studying and working and uh, serving in the capacity of the, with the medical missionaries of Mary. But the first story in the book talks about Bernie when she is going, she worked, I'm gonna let her tell the story, but I'll kind of give a little bit of the background. Bernie was working in Africa and she had students that she was teaching skills to in the hospital. And one of her students was traveling a long distance to go to the funeral of her father, is that correct? That's correct. And Bernie wanted to accompany this student. And I, I just feel like just the whole, notion of helping your student work through the mm -hmm. death of a parent is important, but I'll let Bernie tell that story that's told in the beginning of the book. So often we don't understand life events until afterwards, mm -hmm. but going together with the woman to her home, I had never visited the home. I had worked in the hospital and it was very enriching and very embarrassing. <laughs> I hadn't done my homework. I did not realize that the person in that culture was buried inside the home. Ah. And that 
it was a surprise for me. And going from the bright sun sunlight, the brilliant, mm -hmm. into the darkness, I fell into the hole. Mm. <laughs> With the deceased. Oh, oh literally. <laughs> literally. I thought you were being philosophical. No, no. Okay. she literally <laughs> fell literally into fell the in. hole <laughs> that the deceased was lying in. So that's one of but the first stories in the book. <laughs> they took very good care of me. Four men lifted me up <laughs> and <laughs> I was all dressed in white and the clay there is reddish and it was all over me. I mm -hmm. was covered in clay. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> that's wild. But the woman was so appreciative and her mother was so appreciative that we had accompanied her and not just left her on a bus, which would have meant some of the family had to travel 15, 20 miles to pick her up. Mm -hmm. And it's the personal touch. When we get together with people, we make a connection. Mm -hmm. And during COVID, we were not able to make that connection. Right. Sure, there's Zoom, but that personal connection makes all the difference. And we've seen an increase in dementia with mm -hmm. our patients mm -hmm. in nursing homes who have had to stay isolated, unable to talk with anybody, and their thought processes deteriorated. Oh yeah, I know that a lot of people have been suffering just because they haven't been able to have physical touch. I mean, people have gone without physical touch for a year. A lot of people that live alone, and that is so important to get hugs. You know, there's a lot of studies that show we need to have that. So this has been a really hard time in many ways for everyone. And reconnecting together, mm -hmm. making the connections and holding on to this wisdom we've experienced makes us able to go forward with more understanding mm -hmm. and able to capitalize on our time together. And it's been proven that when a person feels comfortable, they absorb much more knowledge mm -hmm. of what we're trying to instruct them. Very good. Yes. Yeah. Bernie and I have been talking about a resilience program and we're trying to develop that. Oh, nice. You know, resilience, that term has been revitalized in this, during this COVID and we feel like that's really important, not only for nursing students, for patients, for providers, mm -hmm. you know, nursing staff, medical staff, everyone in the hospital has been the true heroes in these mm -hmm. hospitals and community organizations as well. You know, our public health nurses are, uh, hey, they are beyond hero. Oh, I agree. With uh, everything they've done during this epidemic. Also, our uh, volunteers. You know, our volunteers are, uh, you know, uh, you can't beat them. You mm -hmm. can't beat them during this epidemic. And there's so many things we have learned mm -hmm. through this COVID, and we do not want to lose those things we have learned mm -hmm. with self-care, with revitalization. Uh, you know, during COVID, I feel like I became even more spiritual than before. Oh. I mean, I can't think of a day that I didn't pray, Lord, please mm -hmm. help us through this. I agree. You know, we have so many things we need uh, to help our families, our communities to be healthy and our children, mm -hmm. you know, the stress on our children, you know, I don't think they feel stress because they play and that type of thing, but they have had to endure so much mm -hmm. during COVID. They need a routine. We all need routine, I feel like. I agree. And the routine being away from school. And uh, and away from their friends and everything they know. And it's such an important developing time for all that stuff for yes, kids. Yes, it is. And Bernie and I were talking on the way down here. 50 years from now, what will people remember about this time? What will they remember? You know, and... Resilience means ability to bounce back and part of our program will be stretching 
and then bouncing back. Oh. And when we do it in our body, it ha enables us to understand what we do with ideas. Mm -hmm. We don't have to say, no, this won't work. We can try. And that's a great advantage to have as we go forward. I love that. Yeah. Well, let's tell everybody how they can get in touch with this book. How okay. can people get a copy of this book? It's available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Better for Being With You is the title. It's available on Amazon. I guess I can show you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've yeah. got it up on got the screen. Got it up on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not have anything scheduled right now for the book. We had several book signings prior to COVID, but we're happy to schedule those, and uh, I'm sure we can give you our contact information. Yeah, what is your contact information? Tanya Gully at upike.edu is my email. Say that one more time. Tanya Gully at upike.edu. Dot edu. U Pike, U P I K E. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Edu. Dot edu. Yes. Okay, we'll have to get that up. I really appreciate you guys coming here today and to share this book with us once again. It's a wonderful book. Better for Being With You A Philosophy of Care. Sister Bernie and Tanya, thank you so much for being here, and I recommend this book highly to anyone, especially during these times. Thank you so much, and this is a closer look. Thank you.